Hello, my name is Hecoti Chapman. Um, I'm doing my presentation on chapter six. Uh, the trial that we are covering is the Hupman trial. Uh, some of the circumstances to the this trial is in, uh, in 1932, Colonel Charles A. Lindenberg, uh, his 20 month year old son, 20 month old son, Charles A. Lindenberg the Jr., was kidnapped in Hopewell, New Jersey, and left behind were ransom notes demanding $50,000 in money, in cash. Uh, during this case, the um, the Linden Lindenberg had already been world renowned as he traveled the world. He traveled um, the Atlantic, and he he was very well known for it. And just five years later, this he came in the spotlight again after his son was being kidnapped. Um, uh, during this time, the public came and did just about everything they could to help him out, you know, the newspapers and they were they were looking for sources, they were giving anonymous tips whenever they could find any about uh, suspects. Um, they were yeah, they just did a, the, the the public was very supportive in trying to help find their child. Um in the 1930s, law enforcement lacked the technology and the ability to conduct to conduct careful crime scenes, and they just they just didn't have what we have today, in in the in the crime world crime, criminal world where you know they didn't have you know DNA samples they didn't have you know just you know the way. Our crime, you know, the way we see it on TV today, they just, they just lacked all this stuff. And um, so the case was about, it took about four years for them to find this, their first suspect. And um, yeah, so Bruno Richard Huptman was a German born carpenter who was convicted of, and of the abduction and murder of the 20-month-old Charles A. Lindenberg, Jr. The trial began January 2nd, 1935 at the Hendron County Court County Court in Flemington, New Jersey. Uh, the judge who presided was Thomas Woodtaker. Woodtaker trenched presided in this case. Um, so the Something that was quite interesting to me about this case was uh, the Hearst newspaper paid for the defendant's fee for the attorney um, on the condition that the wife of Hupman and Anna Hupman would um, would grant an exclusive interview to them, and they they paid for the attorney from Brooklyn. His name was Edward J. Riley. And accompanying him was New Jersey attorneys C. Lloyd Fisher, Frederick Pope, and Robert Roskinaz assisted him. And uh, the state attorney, uh, the attorney general David T. Willits, led the prosecution, assisted by attorney J. Hoek, Joseph Lang, H. Dobson Peacock, and George Large. Um, so the most interesting parts to me about this case were during the direct examination. So when we're doing direct examination, you know, it should elicit testimony that sufficiently elaborates the facts so attorneys can persuade jurors that their story of the case is more probable than the narrative of the opposing attorneys. During this case, um, in the video link that I sent, it wasn't very professional like we how we saw in um, 12 Angry Men or how we saw in uh, in any of the movies that we see today like where the Kate the court is professionally made and how everyone stood and rose for for the judge no but um, in the clip that I sent it's 
it's very old fashioned, you know. They didn't have a witness stand. It was more of just a seat up in the, the up at the top. You know, you couldn't really even see the judge at all. Um, it was very unprofessional like where there was so much noise going on in the courtroom. You know, there it was just it just wasn't professional by any standard. And during the direct examination um, in the clips, uh, they didn't, they weren't really able to, you know, understand what was happening. All you saw was just screaming and yelling. And um, yeah, so direct examination is difficult because attorneys are never sure about the stories they are, they are constructing. And in this case, all they, they had three pieces of evidence. Um, the first piece was obviously the money that they found that had the uh, ransom written on them. Uh, the piece of wood that they felt was created, um, the ladder that was created by the piece of wood they found. It was the same wood and a handwritten, the handwritten, uh, the people who checked the handwriting, they said that it was identical. So it wasn't really, um, so the stories that the attorneys painted weren't, um, weren't that difficult stories to paint just because of what evidence they had. Um, skillful attorneys shape and frame narrative fragments so that pieces of the testimony point to the story theme and fit with the fragments of the testimony. So during the examination, um, and when he questioned him about the, mostly during the, in the video, he questioned him about the money was their, you know, biggest chunk of evidence, you know, because if, uh, he, they, he had got caught up by the, um, at a gas station actually, and, uh, he gave the money to them and the attorney kept asking him, you know, when they gave him the money, what was your, what was your answer? And he, he, he didn't know what to say, so he, he kept on re, um, backtracking on his stories, and that's what kind of, that's where the Attorney General did really good. Um, the effectiveness of direct examination depends on the attorney planning skill, on the attorney's planning skill in selection of witnesses whose stories relate to the case theory. So in the video, um, if you watch the beginning part of the video, I mean, I said to start at seven minutes, but it was just a whole bunch of the witnesses. Um, they would just stand and say, I saw him. They would stand and say, I saw him. I took the money. It was his voice. You know, they, the d attorney general did really well in selecting his witnesses because every single one of his witnesses said that this was the man they saw and this was exactly what they, um, they heard and this was the voice that they heard because of his German accent so uh, the question that I was given was uh, what are some important considerations for planning direct examination and according to the book one of the one goal of direct examination is for attorneys to elicit stories from the witnesses uh, to some attorneys the direct examination is the most important part in trial because it paints the story of the cases and lays out the facts so pretty much what uh what i got from this was that uh during the direct examination is one of the most crucial parts in a trial because of the fact that it points out all the the, the story of the the case you know it tells you why we're there it tells you what happened it tells you what was going on during this time and why they were doing what they were doing and the two questions that I came up with is uh, what was the difference between the defendant attorney and the attorney general's attitude towards the case and the second question is what are some of the differences between the technology and savvy the um, the savvy compared uh, then compared to now do you think the case would um, would have had a different outcome? Why or why not? Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you.